cherish your human connections, your relationships with friends and family. Venice is eternity itself. Tyranny will make an entire population into readers of poetry. This assumption that the blue-collar crowd is not supposed to read it or a farmer in his overalls is not to read poetry seems to be dangerous, if not tragic. For a writer, only one form of patriotism exists, his attitude toward language. Contrary to popular belief, the outskirts are not where the world ends, they are precisely where it begins to unfurl. The real history of consciousness starts with one's first lie. I simply think that water is the image of time and every New Year's Eve, in somewhat pagan fashion, I try to find myself near water, preferably near a sea or an ocean, to watch the emergence of a new helping, a new cupful of time from it. No matter how daring or cautious you may choose to be in the course of your life, you are bound to come into direct physical contact with what's known as evil. I mean here not a property of the Gothic novel, but, to say the least, a palpable social reality that you in no way can control. The mechanics of love imply some sort of bridge between the sensual and the spiritual sometimes to the point of deification. The notion of an afterlife is implicit not only in our couplings but also in our separations. Neither as a writer nor moreover as a leader of a nation should you use terminology that obscures the reality of human evil. I remember myself, age five, sitting on a porch overlooking a very muddy road. The day was rainy. I was wearing rubber boots, yellow, no, not yellow, green. And for all I know, I'm still there. Whenever one pulls the trigger in order to rectify history's mistake, one lies, for history makes no mistakes, since it has no purpose. The concept of historical necessity is the product of rational thought and arrived in Russia by the Western route. The idea of the noble savage, of an inherently good human nature, hampered by bad institutions of the ideal state of social justice, and so forth. None of these originated or blossomed on the banks of the Volga. The imprisoning of a writer is the same as the burning of a book. Poetry is rather an approach to things, to life, than it is a typographical production. The poetic notion of infinity is far greater than that which is sponsored by any creed. Every individual ought to know at least one poet from cover to cover, if not as a guide through the world, then as a yardstick for the language. Regardless of whether one is a writer or a reader, one's task consists first of all in mastering a life that is one's own, not imposed or prescribed from without, 
no matter how noble its appearance may be. For each of us is issued but one life, and we know full well how it all ends. How delightful to find a friend in everyone. What I like about cities is that everything is king size, the beauty and the ugliness. Who included me among the ranks of the human race? It is well to read everything of something and something of everything. The one who writes a poem writes it above all because verse writing is an extraordinary accelerator of conscience, of thinking, of comprehending the universe. Life has a great deal up its sleeve. I like the idea of isolation. I like the reality of it. You realize what you are, not that the knowledge is inevitably rewarding. Translation is not original creation. That is what one must remember. In translation, some loss is inevitable. Life is a game with many rules but no referee. One learns how to play it more by watching it than by consulting any book, including the holy book. Small wonder, then, that so many play dirty, that so few win, that so many lose. By writing, in the language of his society, a poet takes a large step toward it. It is society's job to meet him halfway, that is, to open his book and read it. With poets, the choice of words is invariably more telling than the storyline. That's why the best of them dread the thought of their biographies being written. Snobbery, but it's only a form of despair. Unlike life, a work of art never gets taken for granted. It is always viewed against its precursors and predecessors. Try not to pay attention to those who will try to make life miserable for you. There will be a lot of those, in the official capacity as well as the self-appointed. This is the generation whose first cry of life was the Hungarian uprising. After all, it is hard to master both life and work equally well, so if you are bound to fake one of them, it had better be life. Basically, it's hard for me to assess myself, a hardship not only prompted by the immodesty of the enterprise, but because one is not capable of assessing himself, let alone his work. However, if I were to summarize, my main interest is the nature of time. That's what interests me most of all. What time can do to a man. I started to write when I was 18 or 19. However, until I was about 23, I didn't take it that seriously. It is almost a rule that the more complex a man is, the simpler his billing. A person with a retrospective ability gone rampant often would be called an historian. Similarly, one to whom reality doesn't seem to make sense gets dubbed a philosopher. I began to despise Lenin 
even when I was in the first grade, not so much because of his political philosophy or practice, but because of his omnipresent images. Man is what he reads. Life, the way it really is, is a battle not between bad and good, but between bad and worse. An ethical man doesn't need a consensus of his allies in order to act against something he finds reprehensible. Bad literature is a form of treason. After the last line of a poem, nothing follows except literary criticism. Poetry seems to be the only weapon able to beat language, using language's own means. I do not believe in political movements, I believe in personal movement, that movement of the soul when a man who looks at himself is so ashamed that he tries to make some sort of change within himself, not on the outside. A language is a more ancient and inevitable thing than any state. The real biographies of poets are like those of birds, almost identical. Their data are in the way they sound. A poet's biography lies in his twists of language, in his meters, rhymes and metaphors. Unfortunately, a human being is able to comprehend only that amount of evil which he is able to commit himself. For the poet, the credo or doctrine is not the point of arrival, but is, on the contrary, the point of departure for the metaphysical journey. Weaknesses have a certain function in a poem, some strategy in order to pave the reader's way to the impact of this or that line. The most desirable woman for a man is the one that seems unapproachable. A man is, after all, what he loves but one always feels cornered when asked to explain why one loves this or that person and what for. In order to explain it, which inevitably amounts to explaining oneself, one has to try to love the object of one's attention a little bit less. Nothing convinces an artist more of the arbitrariness of the means to which he resorts to attain a goal, however permanent it may be, than the creative process itself, the process of composition. I don't suppose that I know more about life than anyone of my age, but it seems to me that in the capacity of an interlocutor, a book is more reliable than a friend or a beloved.